Hello everyone again and welcome back to the third installment of these accounting basics. Now I think an argument could be made that I should have started with this one, but I wanted to give a little big picture stuff first and now we are going to talk about debits and credits. I feel like this is one of the most common things people hear when they don't know a whole, uh, whole lot about accounting, but it is very familiar, right? Well, if you want to actually know what debits and credits refer to, the first thing you probably need to do is forget their meaning in your everyday life. When I had my first accounting class, I heard debits and credits. The teacher asked, you know, what, what do you guys think that means? And I started trying to draw some kind of logic between debit cards and credit cards <laughs> and how credit cards put something on an account kind of debit card draws directly out of your bank account. Forget all that. Ignore that. Okay. <laughs> if you really want to know what debits and credits are, we get to start with a tiny history lesson. Okay. So back in the 15th century, there was a guy named Luca Pacioli. Oh, actually, I have his full name here. Let me let me get this. Fra Luca Bartolomeo de Pacioli. <laughs> My Italian accent is terrible, sorry. But that's his full name. This guy was a brilliant mathematician. He worked with um, Leonardo da Vinci. He was quite the mind, and he came up with a very simple yet brilliant way of accounting for a company's books or an individual's books, any entity really. And he called this double entry bookkeeping. All right, keep that in mind. The double entry refers to the debits and the credits. Basically what he said was anytime a transaction is recorded in one account, it needs to be recorded in another account as well just in an opposite fashion. This way, you could always do a check to see if there's a balance. So when that gets into the nitty gritty of how you actually do this, if you have any transaction, let's take a very simple one, like um, getting paid for a product. You, you know, I hand you something, you hand me a hundred bucks. I made a sale, good for me. What that would entail is hitting sales or revenue, whatever you want to call it, and hitting cash. Those are the two accounts affected in that transaction. And of course, we can get into a whole lot more about what different accounts are and how you use them and, and, and all that. But for now, that's relatively simple. Revenue, cash, right? What the entry would be would be debit cash, credit revenue. And in doing this, let's say I had, I mean, that's just one transaction, that's pretty simple, but let's say I had 50, 100, 10,000 transactions like this, like many companies do. Well, it's pretty nice to have a check that says you didn't miss anything. And you can do that at the end of the month for every single transaction, or at the end of a year, it doesn't matter to make sure that all the debits equal all the credits, okay? Now, the other way you can think about this is there are different accounts that hold, let's call them natural balances. And I think another video will be required to talk about this. But basically, revenue is a credit account and cash is a debit account. That's not to say you can't have credits in one and debits in the other, but these accounts hold kind of natural balances. And when we get into our financial statements, we can do certain checks that everything is working out, okay? As a final point, some people, when they're trying to be a little glib maybe, I don't know, but they know what debits and credits are and you don't and they wanna rub it in your face, they'll say something like, Debits and credits just mean left and right. And then you say, okay, thanks, that didn't really help me. But <laughs> what that means is in the actual recording of transactions, how it used to happen back in Mr. Luca Pacioli's day, you know, on a piece of paper, you had a ledger, you had these different accounts, 
And they would use, and we still use today, it's just maybe going a little out of fashion, but they would use what's called a T-chart. And the reason it's called a T-chart is you have a line here, and then the account is written here, and then you have a line down the middle. And debits are on the left, credits are on the right. And as all the various transactions that happen throughout the year affect this account, you can record debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit. And at the end of the period, you're left with a final balance. Okay? So that's what that means, left and right, debit and credit. <laughs> I did a little research on Luca and saw that he's known for having said, you should never go to sleep until all the debits equal all the credits. <laughs> Nowadays, with the accounting systems that we have, um, you know, th this check is kind of done automatically, and you're not even allowed to make an entry unless all the debits equal all the credits, right? So technology is great, but the concept behind this is even greater, and it's, it works, it's brilliant. Okay? All right, so let's wrap this up with a question. Remember, comment or ask a question of your own. Either way, engaging is going to help you keep this stuff in your head and maybe even get a little creative and think about stuff new stuff that you can come up with okay so what first comes to mind when someone says accounting to you the reason i ask this is because a lot of people would say debits and credits even if they don't really know what that means so answer what you think below or ask a question of your own and i'll see you next time